Now going to take a deeper dive into the Ukrainian president's UK visit. I want to welcome Stuart Crawford, who is a defense analyst and joins me now from Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, good to have you with us. You're also a former lieutenant colonel. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, so I, I want to uh, look at, at Zelensky's speech uh, to begin with, because uh, despite a war going on in his country right now, he did bring his typical sense of humor with him as he politely pushed for fighter jets. What was your assessment of that speech and that request? Well, I think that um, in many ways, Zelensky is, is a bit of a hero in the UK for all his efforts in Ukraine during the war against Russia. And he was a very welcome uh, guest and he pressed all the right buttons. I mean, his visit is very significant. Uh, met at the airport by the, our prime minister, Rishi Sunak, taken to Downing Street and then addressing both houses of parliament, then meeting the king. Uh, that's pretty, I mean, that's, you know, basically a state visit in many ways. And I think that uh, his, uh, his speech to the two houses of parliament had two purposes. One was to thank the British people and the British government for their help so far, but secondly, to try and make sure that that support and help continues and that the British public and the British parliamentarians don't get war weary, as it were, uh, and let this issue slip off the radar. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, we're just looking uh, right now at pictures that came into us just moments ago of the British uh, Prime Minister and the Ukrainian President meeting with Ukrainian troops at a military base in Dorset, England. And of course, uh, the British military has been helping to train Ukrainian troops since 2014, since uh, Russia annexed Crimea. This has been a long term commitment, and it seems that it's going to continue for the foreseeable future. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the base of which you speak in, uh, in Dorset is one that's well known to me because that's where all um, tank training, uh, armoured fighting vehicle training in the British Army takes place. And I've spent many months there. Uh, and that's where the Ukrainians are being trained on the use of Challenger 2 at the moment. Although we're only sending 14, it's seen as being a symbolic contribution to their struggle against Russia. But I think, um, uh, you know, the, UA the UK and the US and other NATO allies are in this for the long haul. And I think Zelensky's visit is very much trying to reinforce that, that uh, this war is not going to be open uh, over next week or next month, but could last some considerable time. And then the support needs to continue until such times as it comes to its conclusion. It's interesting to note, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, that only a week ago, Ukraine was promised military equipment that previously was considered taboo in terms of the German-made Leopard tanks, as well as the U.S. Abram tanks. Uh, Germany was reluctant and it took much negotiation to get there. Uh, but pretty much almost as soon as that agreement happened, uh, we saw the Ukrainian president lobbying for these fighter jets. It seems like there's always the next thing on the agenda to help uh, change the way this war is going. Absolutely. I mean, the tanks obviously are very useful. And there's quite a large number of uh, German made Leopard 1s and 2s now promised for Ukraine, uh, together with the, the British and the, the, the US tanks. But in terms of taking offensive action to throw the Russian invaders out, um, there is a need for uh, air superiority before large armored formations can maneuver over the countryside. Otherwise, they're very vulnerable to air attack. And that is why the push for fighter jets is being made now. Um, the obvious candidate is the American F-16 Fighting Falcon. It's used by many countries. It's available in numbers. Spares and supplies should not be a major problem. But of course, the, uh, uh, the French will also offer up uh, their Mirage aircraft, and uh, the Swedes will offer up their Saab Gripen. So I think that this is the next stage, aircraft to enable offensive operations by Ukraine. Uh, so take us through the pros and cons of offering fighter jets. So uh, you mentioned earlier, obviously, uh, the training. It's going to take a while to train up some of these Ukrainian pilots to train and, and use and operate these fighter jets. Uh, can you list for us these pros and cons? Well, the, the pros for supplying uh, Ukraine with aircraft that they're already familiar with, like the MiG-29 uh, Russian oblique Soviet model, which is in service with several Eastern European states, is that the Ukrainian pilots are familiar with it. But it's an old aircraft and it hasn't been upgraded to anything approaching the standards of 
uh, modern Western uh, oblique NATO aircraft. Um, it's not as if we're going to have to train Ukrainian pilots from scratch because they'll know how to fly. It's just a case of trying to cram in as much information on uh, the West's more sophisticated aircraft in as short a period of time. But I think to a certain extent, peacetime considerations uh, will be bypassed because Ukraine is at war, the need is urgent, and pilot training could be, in my opinion, curtailed to the absolute minimum to get these guys on the road. In your opinion, in your expertise, what is going to turn the tide of this war? Well, it's going to be providing Ukraine with the weaponry to allow it to strike back at Russia as it deems appropriate. I don't see any reason why Ukraine should not strike into Russian territory if that um, promotes what it's trying to achieve, which is, of course, uh, the uh, expulsion of Russian troops from its own territory. Um, so I think NATO has been a little bit timid in saying uh, that it only supplies weapons for defensive purposes. I think we're way beyond that point now. And now what we need to do is give the Ukrainian armed forces the tools they need to finish the job. Yeah, the sooner the better. Uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Crawford, great to have you on the program. Thanks so much for your time.